Are the same side effects noticed when you use caffeine versus Ritalin? Yeah, they absolutely really are. identical. Yeah, absolutely are. Being a parent, any foreign substance like a drug scares the hell out of me. I, uh, taking it as an adult, I wouldn't see an issue, but something with my baby girl, no, I just, even though I've read about it and I understand what it's supposed to do and Dr. Baker has gone through uh, what the benefits are and he's described basically no uh, s side effects, still, to me, it's somewhat of an unknown and maybe it's just my ignorance, but it, it's somewhat terrifying for me. <laughs> Lauren, too, is worried about how drugs will affect her. I don't want to be normal. What? I don't want to, you don't want I want to be normal, just, I mean, I want to be original, also. Oh, okay. Because that's how Einstein was. Really? He, was, he wasn't too good in school, right. but he turned out to be Einstein. Right. Wonderful um, person. So, um, maybe some people who grow up and have very original ideas. Many learning experts now sympathize with worries about overprescription of such medicines as Ritalin. The problem, they say, is that these drugs have been misunderstood as a cure-all rather than merely as a tool. Is it a cure? Absolutely not. But you learn compensatory strategies, habits, while you're taking the medication that will carry over to when you're not taking the medication. So it, 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 by allowing you to focus better, it allows you to better learn these strategies that we're trying to teach them. I mean, that just makes intuitive sense. You know, I mean, if you Turn up the, if you turn on the lights in the room, you can learn better than trying to learn in the dark. Much better. Yeah. Lauren's parents feel they have found an answer to their child's perplexing mind. Her chronic dawdling was caused by uneven brain chemistry. But part of the proposed solution, medication, still makes them uneasy. So Lauren's parents, like so many of us, have to struggle with the decision of whether to medicate their daughter. They wonder if they risk losing the fanciful and eccentric girl they love. When we return to her story, we'll discover their decision. Meanwhile, Nathan Van Hoy is finishing the second grade. His particular problem, phonemic awareness, is still making a tangle of the learning process. He spit some slime out to blind. Our research shows us that if we don't get to the kids by about nine years of age with strong, efficient strategies to help them understand sound structure, the probability that they will learn to read is, is very minimal. To help him, the school wants to put Nathan in the resource room, where he will be learning with kids of all ages and abilities, from subtle problems like his own to more severe ones like autism. His mom, Lois, worries that Nathan, whose social skills are his strength, might feel stigmatized and isolated in a resource room. The scholarly part of me knows that these are intelligent people and that the evaluations they made are appropriate. The mom part of me thinks that it stinks. They're asking me my input, how do, you know, what do I want done? Um, God, do you put your, your kid in a classroom where you know he's gonna fail? Does he have a chance to succeed in this other system? In the end, Lois decides she has no better choice. So Nathan's friends go one way, he goes another. Something a horse will eat, Nathan. Um, hey. Hey, hey May. He had great gains. Um, he advanced um, almost three levels in reading. Um, he's performing on grade level with his math. Ray, R-A-Y. Good. He's secure here, he's doing well. I couldn't be happier with what he's achieved. Do you have, any, do you have anything harder? Yeah, anything. 
This is an example of something he wrote during journal time after we got our rent. But as winter approaches, there are signs of the familiar failures. He looks big when he is standing up. He also reminds me of Jeff Gordon running around the running around the cage just to see where, what kind of errors he makes. Nathan's mom is learning that her son's tortured progress is going to involve a series of small gains and more than a few setbacks. He's kind of reached a plateau and it's, it's going to take that extra effort and that extra thinking to, to go to the next level. Yeah. And that's kind of what I wrote in my Guided by advice from learning experts, Nathan's teachers are tackling his problem with reading and writing by focusing on his particular way of learning. Our O-U-T-R. They hope to employ his coping mechanism, his strong memory, to attack his weaknesses. Record it for me. Drilling him with intensive and repetitive language sounds at school and at home. All right, listen to it two more times and record it one more. I pray every night that Nathan can be the best he can be and that one day the light bulb's going to come on and things will be easy for him. There are days when you think, will it ever happen? But I don't allow myself to think that it won't. Dan fist fits fish cast. Good job. It's a year later, and Nathan is still in the resource room. The biggest improvement is he knows sounds now. He knows how to put sounds together into words. He can manipulate sounds in words. Say it fast, get ready. Fist. Nathan's learning problems will never go away. He will learn ways to compensate, which he is beginning to do at this point. He has a lot of support in his family and his family Shed. will make sure that he gets the right help he needs. Shed can not the biggest challenge for Nathan comes at the end of the fourth grade when he is required to take a state mandated test to move up to the fifth. The success of the test is measured in one, two, three, and four with three and four being acceptable scores. You're told no one ever makes a four that if you were able to achieve a four on this end of year writing a test, it would be equivalent to a high school um, performance. His mom, Lois, is extremely worried, but she is also able to get him accommodations, like dictating his answers instead of writing them. Now she can only wait for the results. The day his test course came back, Mrs. Marshall called me. And she said, you need to sit down. I need to tell you about Nathan's scores. So immediately my hot heart dropped, um, thinking, you know, oh, God, this is not good. And she just starts giggling. And she said, Nathan has done really well. She said, Nathan scored a 4.0 on his end of the year writing test. Nathan is one of only four students in the entire school to have a perfect score. He has proved that he can use his strengths to overcome his weaknesses. I've learned that in some parts of your life that you want to quit when things are difficult. But some way or another, um, you'll get over that obstacle, even if it takes you slow slow like the tortoise and other people are the hare and they finish but slowly you'll get there his ability to verbalize himself his keen memory his attention to detail scored him the highest score that's success nathan's in fifth grade this year